On a nice summer day, Goldilocks had an idea. Since she never liked to read books, she built a tall tower by stacking the books in the house on top of each other. She jumped over the tower and started having fun. Seeing this, her mother immediately warned Goldilocks. Books are for reading, Goldilocks. Playing with them, you can damage them. Ugh, but books are so boring. It's better to play games with them. At that time, Goldilocks noticed another book almost falling out of the window. Hmm, where did this book come from? Just as Goldilocks was about to touch the book, the book suddenly took wings and flew towards the forest. Goldilocks was so curious that she followed the book. Hey! Wait! Flying book! Stop! Uh, oh, where did you go? In the depths of the forest where Goldilocks was running, there was a white hut. A cute goat family was living in this hut. And the hut was full of books. Sometimes even neighboring animals were going and borrowing books from the goat family. The father goat wasn't sleeping before finishing his carpentry books. The mother goat's cookbook was always with her. And the baby goat was loving colorful fairy tale books. That's great! Now I can make a rocking chair for myself! Hmm! So clover soup should only take eight minutes to cook. But that day, the baby goat was very upset because she could not find her favorite book. Oh, <laughs> I can't find my book anywhere. I want my winged book. <laughs> Maybe your book went for a little stroll in the forest, my little goat. The goat family started to look for the lost winged book on the forest path. At that time, Goldilocks was very worried because she lost her way in the forest. Oh, how am I going to get home now? Oh, I can't find the book either. Oh. Then the winged book appeared right behind her like a butterfly. Just when Goldilocks was about to catch it, the book flew towards the goat family's hut. Goldilocks came running to the door of the hut and knocked on the door. The door opened slowly. Hello? Is anyone there? Goldilocks saw hundreds of yellow, pink, thin, and thick books. She started searching around to find where the winged book was hiding. Hmm, this is a big, thick carpentry book. It must be so boring. Goldilocks found other books in every corner of the house. But none of them interested her as much as the winged book. Huh, and that's a cookbook. Ugh, the vegetable dishes are not for me. <laughs> Unable to find the book she was looking for, Goldilocks finally got very tired. When she curled up in a corner to fall asleep, the winged book was placed under her head like a pillow. The goat family, who could not find the baby goat's book anywhere in the forest, eventually returned to their hut. But when they entered the hut, they saw that all the books were scattered. Huh? Someone threw my carpentry book into the fireplace! Someone threw my cookbook into the pot! Someone found my winged book! Not only did she find it, she made it into a pillow and slept on it! Oh! <laughs> when the baby goat cried, the mother and the father goat came to her immediately. They were very surprised to see Goldilocks sleeping in a corner. Who is this person? Why did she scatter our books? Look at those wrinkled pages! 
Goldilocks woke up when she heard the baby goat crying. Oh, uh, you! Uh, I, I'm, I'm Goldilocks. Well, calm down, little girl. We won't hurt you. I was just looking for this flying winged book. Sorry for breaking into your home. That book in your hand is my book. I won't give it to anyone. Aww, but for the first time, I really wanted to read a book. The baby goat was very stubborn, but she was very surprised when she met someone like her who saw this mysterious book take wings. Huh, no child has ever seen this book fly before. So it seems like the mystery book chose you. So keep it. It is my present for you. <laughs> Goldilocks was on top of the world with happiness. She immediately began to read the first sentences of the winged book. At that moment, all the books in the house took off and took their place in the library. Uh, are the other books in the house magic too? <laughs> books don't have magic, Goldilocks. But our imagination, which has grown thanks to books, has a wonderful magic. It's getting dark, Goldilocks. Let's take you home. Your mom must have been worried about you. But we haven't read the other books yet. No one can read that many books in one day. Now you can come to us to read books whenever you want. The goat family took Goldilocks to the garden of her family's house and said goodbye to her. Goldilocks quickly passed her mother, lay down on the floor, and immediately started reading her mysterious book. Goldilocks, where have you been all these hours? I was chasing a flying book, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Do the books ever fly? Yes. They don't really fly, but anything can happen in our dreams. From that day on, the baby goat and Goldilocks became book friends. Sometimes they lent each other books. Sometimes they met to read a book together and had a dream. Thus, these two friends realized that the mystery of the books can be discovered by dreaming. And one day, our dreams in the books will come true. While three little rabbits were walking through the forest, they found a huge carrot. Wow! Look at this! I saw it first! I saw it first! This carrot is mine! I don't care! But I saw the carrot too! While the rabbits were arguing for a long time, one of them finally came up with a great idea. Let's go to the furthest part of the forest and race up to here then. Whoever comes first gets the carrot. But they could not decide which race they would like to do. I run very well. And I jump very well. At that time, the bad wolf, Jack, who was wandering hungry in the forest, immediately hid in the bush when he heard the sound of three little rabbits. Grr, I'm so hungry that only if I swallowed those three rabbits at the same time, I'd be full. Okay, forest running race first. As soon as Bad Wolf learned that the rabbits were going to be competing for carrots, he went ahead and dug a deep hole in the running path. He also covered it with leaves. No rabbit can escape from my traps. <laughs> a little later, the three rabbits started a running race. Each of them rushed past each other. It was not clear who was ahead and who was behind. The big bad wolf, Jack, who saw the rabbits running towards the trap, was watching them curiously. All three of you will fall into that pit! <laughs> 
But the rabbits passed over the trap so fast that they left a huge cloud of dust behind them. The wolf who came and looked at the trap was very surprised because the trap was still intact. Huh? Why didn't the rabbits fall into my trap? Jack took one jump on the leaves to control the trap. Two jumps, and the third time he fell into the pit himself. Uh, no way! I fell into my own trap! Uh. While the wolf was trying to get out of the pit, the three little rabbits raced to jump the furthest. Remember, we will jump by following the direction signs to the carrot. Just as the race was about to begin, the second rabbit got a thorn in her foot. Oh! But I can't jump with that thorn! Oh! While her rabbit friends helped her, the evil wolf Jack changed the direction signs for the carrot. <laughs> Jump into the swamp and I'll eat you up with great appetite, you little cute rabbits! Jack set out for the swamp before the rabbits. Meanwhile, the second rabbit finally got rid of the thorn in her foot, and the jumping race began. Each of them was jumping further from each other, following the direction signs. After a while, they came to a crossroads. There were carrot direction signs on both sides, and they were very confused. Are we going to go left or right? I guess left. No, no, right! The rabbits decided to continue on the left side of the road. Meanwhile, the bad wolf spread the sticky honey he stole from the bees on the rock in the middle of the swamp and began to wait for the rabbits curiously. This will be your last jump, bunnies! <laughs> the rabbits finally saw that the place they had jumped up to was a swamp, not the side of the carrot. No way! I think we have extended the way to the carrot! Then let's jump off the stones in the swamp and cross over. While the rabbits were jumping over the stones, one of them got stuck to the rock. Oh, I'm stuck to the stone! I can't jump! His friends who wanted to help the unlucky rabbit came to him and quickly pulled him from his arm. Thank you, my friends! So the rabbits continued the race. Bad Wolf Jack, whose hands are covered in honey, was attacked by bees while he thought he was going to catch rabbits. Oh, help! He fell into the swamp while running away in fear. Oh, ouch! I'm sinking! Help! The rabbits finally came to a riverbank for the third race. I know swimming very well. Watch how I will be the first. While the rabbits were talking to each other, Jack had another plan. He placed a crispy lettuce just where the rabbits would land. He took a long net in his hand and climbed the tree. While the rabbits are eating lettuce, I'll catch them from here! <laughs> the rabbits quickly started a swimming race. If one got ahead, the other would swim faster and overtake the other one. Finally, all three of them landed at the same time, finishing the race. When the rabbits saw the lettuce right there, they started to eat it with great appetite. Just as the bad wolf was about to catch them from the top of the tree, one of the migrating storks got caught in Jack's net and flew away with him. No! Let me down quick! Ah! 
the rabbits finally got very close to the big carrot, and they started running towards the carrot for the last time. But Jack, the wolf disguised as a carrot, was waiting for the bunnies at the finish line. This time I will eat you as soon as I open my mouth. While the wolf was waiting for the rabbits with his eyes closed and mouth open, an old farmer approached him with joy when he saw a giant carrot. Whoa! Look at that carrot! It's huge. The farmer didn't even realize that the carrot he was shouldering was actually a wolf disguised as a carrot. Grr! Leave me! I'm not a carrot. I'm the bad wolf. The bad wolf, Jack. At the end of the race, the rabbits reached the finish line at the same time, so all three of them took first place. We all won all the races at the same time. Then the three of us can share the giant carrot. Yes, but where is the carrot? When the rabbits wandered around a bit, they found the real carrot the wolf was hiding, and they all ate well together. Because the important thing is to have good friends with whom you can achieve anything together. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats, leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute; they all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her. My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He is very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing: the wolf's feet are black and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out, "You're not our mother!" Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop, bought a big piece of chalk, and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer. So he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time, the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door! It's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted. Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door. Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you. Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf. As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. 
When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door, it's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. One of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names, one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away. And then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother Goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mother, Mother, we love you. Oh, 
they were all full of joy. Ah, oh, my little goats, you're safe. Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and the thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he did not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! Yippee! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee! Woohoo! Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. Once upon a time, there was a diligent laundryman in a village far, far away. The laundryman had a tiny house and a barn behind his house, where his beloved donkey and horse lived. <laughs> what a tiring day yesterday was. <laughs> Whoa, horsey. If anybody's tired, it's me. Yeehaw. I'm carrying the whole load. Maybe, but I'm carrying the laundryman himself. <laughs> Hello. Come on, hope you got some rest, because it's time to hit the road. Every morning, the laundryman loaded up the donkey with all the clean laundry that he had washed the day before. Then he mounted his horse and set off for villages far away to deliver their laundry back to them. All through the day, he delivered clean clothes to people and took the dirty ones. However, the donkey often grew tired because he carried all the laundry and was usually exhausted by the time he got back to the barn. He would eat and then fall asleep immediately. <laughs> What are you doing, donkey? Sleeping already? <laughs> I could go for a run around the barn. Of course you could. You are not the one who had carried all that heavy laundry. The laundry man woke up early the next morning and washed the dirty laundry he collected yesterday. Yep. Now that I'm all caught up, I'll go to the village and collect more dirty clothes. The laundry man took his horse and donkey out of the barn and set off on the road. I've come to get your dirty laundry. Ah, glad you're here, laundry man. Here's the dirty laundry we've been collecting all week. Thank you, ma'am. I'll get your clothes back as soon as possible. The laundry man knocked on the doors of all the houses in the village. He collected a lot of dirty laundry from almost 15 houses, and he put the whole load on the poor donkey. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! These are too heavy! That day, the laundry man walked beside the donkey so that the loads would not tip over. But the donkey was exhausted. His legs gave out, and he fell down in the middle of the road. What happened, donkey? You're very tired, aren't you? We'd better get some rest here. The laundry man laid down under a tree to get some rest. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Hey! What do you want? 
I just wanted to say that today my load is heavier than usual. Couldn't you just help me a little? <laughs> Sorry, donkey, but it's not my job to carry laundry. <laughs> The laundry man finally stood up and they were all on their way again. They took a few steps, but suddenly the donkey fell to the ground again. Yee-haw! Yee-haw! Oh, my poor donkey. Sorry, I made you very tired today. Come on, drink some water. The laundry man took all the laundry off the donkey and put them onto the horse's back. <laughs> the donkey finally felt better, but this time the horse's load was too much for him. I should have put half the laundry under the horse's back from the very beginning, so that the donkey wouldn't have been injured. Since the horse did not help the donkey, he had to carry all the laundry on his back all the way to the house. When he got to the barn, he couldn't even eat because he was exhausted. I did something selfish today, my dear friend. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> now you understand me better. Helping and sharing is important. Eeyaw! Eeyaw! Never forget that, my dear friend. From that day on, whenever the laundry man had a lot of laundry, he took care to share the load between himself, the donkey, and the horse. In this way, they were less tired and had more fun. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>